everyone, and welcome to Attack of the Genres. Today we are going to talk about realistic fiction, and I have a very special guest star. This is Miss Christine Fremont, and funny story, Christine used to be one of my students. That's right, way back in the day when she was a tiny eighth grader. Now she's <laughs> all grown up. So she's going to talk about some of her favorite realistic fiction books while I'm talking about some of my favorite realistic fiction books. So let's get started. First of all, if you don't know what realistic fiction is, it is fiction, which means that it's not true, but the events in it are, could happen. They're real, they're realistic in a sense. Um, so they haven't necessarily happened, but they could happen. That's what makes it realistic fiction. Um, so my top three, one of them is actually behind me right now, which is Stargirl. I love Jerry Spinelli. Jerry Spinelli is a, hey, Jerry Spinelli is a uh, realistic fiction author and he's from the area. Uh, so uh, I read a lot of his books and Stargirl was the very first Jerry Spinelli book I read. It's also my favorite one. And um, for those of you who haven't read it, uh, Stargirl actually follows a boy and uh, they are in high school and it follows this boy and a new girl comes to school. Her name is Stargirl, she's very different. And it talks about how she, everybody else kind of treats her. She's kind of goes a good way and a bad way and there might be some love in there. You know, they did make a Netflix movie of it. I did not enjoy the Netflix movie, but <laughs> the book is very good. Um, the next book I'm gonna talk about is Technically Historical Fiction but um, it is under both categories. So I'm gonna talk about it. Ruta Sapitas is an author who writes a lot of historical fiction, but one book she wrote is called Out of the Easy, and it is my favorite Ruta Sapitas book. Um, it takes place in New Orleans, and uh, it follows this girl who works in a bookshop, but her mother actually raised her in a brothel. So she herself is not a prostitute, um, but her mother, again, grew up in a brothel, and so she grew up around all of those women and that environment, but she is living in New Orleans now once again and um, wanting to go to college. And it's kind of the trials and tribulations between, uh, with the drama behind the brothel business in New Orleans. Uh, it's very good. It's a very good character journey. So I really enjoy that one. Um, and then the last one is definitely historical fiction, but also realistic fiction. And that is Fever 1793, which is Laurie Hall Sanderson. I actually love Laurie Hall Sanderson. Uh, she writes out a great realistic fiction, including Speak, which is at the top of my list. Um, she just recently came out with another book called Shout, which is her memoir, which means that these are true events, things that have happened to her. Um, so I guess Speak would also be up there for me. But Fever 1793 talks about the yellow fever epidemic that happened in Philadelphia, right? Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1793. And it, account, it uh, recounts this, uh, a young girl and going through it all with her family and the things around her. And uh, it's just interesting to read about it and then walk the streets of Philadelphia thinking that all these terrible things happened once in this city. Um, so I just gave you some really great authors there. I said, Rudis Sapitas, Jerry Spinelli, and um, Laurie Hall Sanderson, they're all great realistic fiction writers. Uh, there's a giant long list of realistic fiction writers, but Christine here is gonna share some of her favorite realistic fiction. Yeah, uh, so I got into realistic fiction uh, through some of Mrs. Wallace's recommendations um, <laughs> and have kind of spiraled through the genre since then. So one of my all-time favorites is Missing Abby by Lee Weatherly. And it follows a group of kids who are missing their friend Abby, and they are like a D and D group. So they do Dungeons and Dragons together. And Abby was the DM for like a live role playing situation, and she goes missing. So they go through like the motions of going to school and trying to figure out what happened to her through this novel. And it's really good and nerdy, and I really like that one. <laughs> I like you had a nerdy on the end there. It is. I mean, you've got to understand that like. The, there'll be some parts where they're talking to like the school being like a dungeon and some yeah. of the parallels from like the fantasy game that they play into the description of the actual book. Do you have to be a D&D &D fan to read the book? Not at all. I read this book no. before I knew about D&D &D and um, the mystery in it and the characters I think brought me like through it more so than the information about D&D. &D. Okay. Uh, having played it now as a grown up and going back and reading the book, it fills in a little bit, but not 
it's not a required thing. Okay. Uh, second one is, it's kind of a funny story by Ned Vizzini. So this follows a young boy in Manhattan who is dealing with a lot of pressures and decides that his only option is suicide. And then he ends up in a mental institution and starts meeting all these people with their own problems. And he kind of like figures out how to help himself through listening to their stories. So you get multiple perspectives in it. Um, it's all through his eyes though. But like some of the chapters you'll learn about each of the different characters that he like sits down with while he's there. And um, kind of his story on how he turns that around um, and like changes his life goals and stuff to learn how to help people and not so much uh, feel the pressure of the world on his shoulders. <laughs> and then John Green, I, I love his writing. Some of his books irritate me, but I love the way he writes. Uh, Turtles All the Way Down is my favorite from him so far. Like I've read The Fault in Our Stars and Paper Towns and Looking for Alaska, but Turtles All the Way Down to me is a, it follows a girl who has like a compulsive disorder and it explains like how she handles like anxiety and the things that she does and the way he describes it and the language she uses to describe what she's feeling, I think are very accurate for how I experience at least some of my issues with anxiety and things. So it's very relatable the way he writes it. And there's a mystery in that one as well. I don't want to spoil that one too much because it kind of drives the plot. <laughs> yeah, there, that's actually on my summer reading list, believe it or not. Ooh, I, it's good. I can let you borrow it. <laughs> I, I would definitely agree with you about everything you said with John Green. So uh, I have read him. What is your favorite John Green book besides Out of Sight of Turtles All the Way Down? Is that fairly recent? Probably, pa maybe Paper Towns, but I think that was more so again the relation with the characters in that one. Um, it was less driven. I feel like Looking for Alaska and like uh, an abundance of Catherine and the Fault in Our Stars rely heavily on like that that romance initially, right? Between the teens, but the one in Paper Towns because he's always looking for like where she's going to go. I feel like that in the friends are with him. I feel like the 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 brother boy kind of bonding is a little stronger in that one. Um, and it feels a little bit more like teens and not so much like, you know, this other worldly experience that people go through. Yeah. Like a road trip to the middle Actually, of the Actually, I that's my favorite John Green book and I uh, I bought it and I when I went to read it, it was missing eighty pages. <gasps> like randomly in the middle, like published. Yeah. Like it wasn't like somebody like ripped them out or like you could tell in the binding that like it was a publishing error 80 pages were missing i was like wait what? like it didn't make sense it was like the end of a chapter but then like it started in the middle of a chapter and i was like oh wait something's wrong i feel like that's like a, a book you should keep and you know it'll be like the one of a kind publishing error oh man well i do ha still have it yeah <laughs> uh, i got a night i wrote to the publisher and they sent me and barnes and noble wouldn't refund me so i had to go to the publisher and the publisher gave me a new cap there you go. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear you're a John Green fan, too. So there's lots of great realistic fiction out there, folks. In fact, Christine, do you have any realistic fiction on your summer reading list? I have a ton. <laughs> um, I have uh, Openly Straight is on my summer reading list, and that's a, um, a young gay man who then switches to a new public school um, where he's, you know, can be whatever he wants to be because nobody knows his backstory. Um, so I'm interested in that one just to see how the author handles that um, and like how he will come out a second time. Um, the Girls of July, which is our book yes. club. We're I in a book club together, friends. Woo! <laughs> uh, I just got that on Kindle to start. And then um, the Statistical Probability of Love I started yesterday. Mm -hmm. But that is, it's a high school aged girl who's going on a trip to see her dad who is getting remarried. And she is going to meet a stranger. And you know, those weird events that will happen, hopefully, uh, will be positive. Yeah. We'll find out. Um, yeah. Those are the three right now that are like high on my list. I'm in a fantasy bubble right now, but my next realistic fiction book is one that I actually did a chapter one read aloud on, which was? Stay Gold it just Ooh. came out. Um, so I am very excited about this one. Uh, and I obviously have a lot of other realistic fiction uh, reads on my summer reading list. So I'm excited for that too. 
including Girls of July. Yes. <laughs> All right, friends. Well, thanks for joining us on Attack of the Genres, and we'll see you next time for a new genre.